if capitalism refers to um, you know this mode of economic production that's based on privatizing the means of production and sort of running production through a profit maximizing uh, a profit maximizing business model that's premised on perpetual growth um, then I, I feel like it's inherently unsustainable but if we're talking about a mode of production that's purpose driven so replacing those old business models with business models that are based around um, achieving a social and environmental purpose and still generating revenue to further that purpose, then I think it can be sustainable. But it's p potentially so different from capitalism that you might not call it capitalism anymore. We think that the, the problem is the economic system itself, but then we need to rebuild change. it, to change it, to create reform. another one, and it, it is to reform it. And, but the, the, the point is how to do it. Uh, people believe in the end of the world, but can't believe in the end of capitalism. Yeah. Maybe because capitalism just leads us to the end of the world. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, that's the paradox that, that we are in. COP15, Copenhagen, it's very similar to what Paris is being sold as in, in that it is a moment. It is a, a major moment in time. And with Copenhagen, I feel like there was all of this hope and it built into this amazing bubble and it was, you know, it was represented by people in the streets, it was represented by people around the world gathering around this bubble, but it popped. I think what we have the opportunity to do this, or next year, 2015 in Paris, um, is that we've learned from our mistakes. We, we, I think, have come to a place where we realize that one of the most important things is our interconnectedness as human beings and that we need to uh, embrace that and, and have that um, reflect in our decisions. So, um, yes, we need to get into the streets and we need to you know, create media attention, but I think what we need to do is... Uh, really keep fostering our grassroots communities and, and strengthening our connections to each other. Uh, my role for me is to, to be a witness, to be a link and to bring awareness. Then uh, hopefully, I hope it will, it will create solidarity. So awareness is, uh, I mean it's my duty, it's already uh, a lot. Every time I read the mainstream media, all I can think about is this is just an accurate reflection of what the status quo currently is. And unfortunately that means the corporations have slightly a louder voice than the average day citizen does. And it also means the the media, as a big corporation at the end of the day as well, has a vested interest in maintaining that status quo too. So I, I wouldn't say that the mainstream media are scared of change, but change might not necessarily mean good things, especially not financially for mainstream media. So sometimes the content that they choose to produce, especially when it comes to climate change and other environmental issues, does pander a little bit more to creating this fear of change in people. The fundamental idea of population control is not only paternalistic, you know, politically and morally indigestible and evil, it is also um, stupid, right? It pretends that we have no creative agency, that we can only be a negative. And if we don't believe that we have any creative agency, if we don't believe that we are just simple, you know, budget line items on a on an accounting sheet then okay go ahead and manage the world but that's not the way I understand people it's not the way I understand 
the um, the great opportunity we face, and that is our capacity to redesign our relationship to natural systems. I'm pro that. And if we contextualize that on Egypt, we already have the population is growing rapidly. The fertility rate is already so high. This is not just a threat when it comes to climate change and its impacts. It's also very pressuring that it has come to a point that is destructive over the current infrastructure. If we are talking about resource management, we have scarcity in resources, especially in Egypt when it comes to water resources, energy resources. The growing population is actually doing so much pressure on that. And the, the resources at the same time are so much um, threatened by the impacts of climate change. It's still under discourse, but it will be shocking to introduce it to the Arab cultures and also the African cultures. We are still working on that. Um, but yes, I see it as a way to, as a way of planning for climate change. Bank definitely have the decision to invest it or not, and also fossil fuels, you know, is yeah definitely yeah is uh, cause a lot of. Uh, question or problems for, for our living. So I think banking definitely, yeah, is clo close to uh, fossil fuels, also close to uh, individuals. So uh, I think banks should pay, pay, play an important role to address the connection between uh, fossil fuel and uh, individuals. Cette question, elle est extrêmement euh, complexe. Je ne dirais pas qu'en fait, qu'il y a une chose qui doit arriver avant une autre. Je pense que l'un alimente l'autre. Euh, je crois que avoir des énergies plus partagées, plus renouvelables, peut créer énormément d'emplois et est bon pour une justice sociale euh, et alimente la justice sociale. Euh, donc, je, je ne mettrai pas un élément avant l'autre. Je pense que les deux, en fait, s'implémentent ensemble. I think the only way possible to provide for everybody is if we do have and continue to create and plan for mega cities, and plan for mega cities that uh, pro you know give people good quality of life. So it's better to plan for it than for it to happen by mistake, or to for it to be unplanned, and everyone's miserable and unhappy in mega cities, which are inevitable at some point. It's time for the tide to turn and for the museums to be much more responsible. Culture has a role in being uh, totally responsible, totally transparent, and part of that would be to uh, renegotiate uh, funding streams for culture in general across the board, absolutely. Something that I know is very important is like um, how do we envision the future? Because we all know what's going to happen because of climate change if we fail to change our current trajectory so we continue to emit so much greenhouse gas emissions into the atmosphere. We definitely know what it's going to look like. But we actually don't know what it could be if we actually succeed. So. I think if we want to, for people to envision where they want to go, to where what they want to go, it's very important to have an image of our story or what this future is going to be. So I think in this process of um, showing the possibilities for a positive, even realistic future, 
um, then artistic formats uh, are essential. First of all is love, um, and I think love is a, an important answer, an important means um, actually to a lot of um, the ecological debates and why there's such a separation um, between us and the rest of nature now and why we've actually done so much damage, I think, to the earth. And, uh, and I think one, returning to that essence, um, which is very much implied in most all religions, um, I think is very powerful. And one, and the faith is an incredible connector. Um, between billions of people around the world. Um, and I think it's truly a, a positive force, actually. Um, again, if you look at it um, as such, and again, most religions and most philosophies um, do embody that, uh, again, this earth has been gifted to us. Um, it's very sacred. Um, and that uh, we're not alone here and we should be taking care of it. Je pense qu'il n'y a pas à euh, euh, utiliser une technologie, faire, euh, faire évoluer une technologie ou pas. Il euh, y, y a une combinaison de choses qu'il euh, euh, qu faut prendre en compte. Donc je dirais ni oui ni non. Euh, je, dirais, euh, je dirais simplement euh, qu'il faut euh, par exemple euh, utiliser, euh, régresser dans, dans, dans certains... Euh, euh, certaines techniques, certaines technologies euh, pour pouvoir augmenter d'autres et, euh, et puis essayer de créer un équilibre comme ça. En fait, euh, ce qui, euh, là, ce que je fais extrêmement couramment, c'est par exemple euh, pour tout ce qui est bricolage, c'est utiliser des outils manuels et euh, bon, par exemple un vilebrequin plutôt qu'une perceuse et ça me permet de, de, de redécouvrir aussi, enfin de découvrir aussi une façon de faire qui est plus lente et qui est beaucoup plus intéressante parce qu'on peut écouter son bois, etc. Et en fait, ça, ça fait une, une multitude de découvertes. Et je me dis après, pourquoi est-ce que cet objet a évolué avec un moteur À quoi ça sert euh, Pour d'autres choses, par exemple, un téléphone, je préfère, euh, je préfère celui que j'ai maintenant. If I lead, I'm a metaphor of the leaders of the world. Then I'm in a loca local leading and there is global leading. Then if, as a local leader, I do what I have to do and I'm invested in uh, that type of uh, statement, and most of the people I know who are in capacity of doing that are doing that too, then circles will quit energy to uh, say the most important message for leaders of the world. Then this is like, a, my, that question gives me the idea that I'm not alone. En France, ce qu'on dit, c'est que euh, de toute façon, on va passer par la décroissance, du growth, euh, parce qu'une euh, croissance infinie dans un monde fini n'est pas possible. Et en fait, pour moi, il n'y a que deux options possibles. C'est soit une croissance choisie, soit une croissance subie. Et la question, ce n'est pas de savoir est-ce que, oui ou non, on va devoir arrêter la croissance économique telle qu'elle est, mais quel type de décroissance on souhaite avoir. Et plus on prend les choses euh, en amont, euh, plus on pense le, le, le chemin pour arriver dans un monde plus soutenable, euh, plus on va avoir une décroissance qui est désirable et on va arriver dans un monde qui est soutenable et désirable.